Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss the Rafal deal in which Anil Ambani is playing a major part because he has been made the partner who will take over from Rafal the manufacturing locally of the aircraft from Dassault, the manufacturing of the aircraft. And therefore, the 50% uh, supposedly what is called the offset is going to be done by his company. Now, the interesting part is Modi government had come to power based on the issue of 2G and 2G corruption. And uh, Paranjay, who is with B in this show today, remembers that 2G scam was not just about Mr. Raja and what was being done in order to give license to favored parties, but there were certain favored parties. And Anil Lambani's reliance uh, was one of them who got through Swan Telecom the license. So, will you tell us a little more about Anil Ambani and his involvement in Swan Telecom and in that <coughs> sense the beneficiary of the 2G scam was really his company? For me, it is very interesting that you are trying to draw a link between developments that took place quite a few years apart from each other. Now, there were many, many corporate conglomerates that were the alleged beneficiaries of the manner in which the then Union Communications Minister, Andimoto Raja, followed his, what is now evident, deeply flawed, extremely corrupt system of first come, first served, while allocating second generation electromagnetic spectrum. And one of the major beneficiaries, I mean the license as you know subsequently got cancelled by the Supreme Court, but one of the major beneficiaries was the ADAG, the Anil Dhirubhai Ambani group, headed by the younger, the younger sibling of the two uh, Ambani siblings, Anil Ambani. And it all pertained to a company called Swan Telecom. Now Swan Telecom was a very, very unusual corporate entity. And if one goes by the charge sheet that was filed by the Central Bureau of Investigation, it was held in a very, very com convoluted, complicated manner through various firms in different parts of the world, in tax havens and so on and so forth. But there was a very, very interesting side light to it. It seemed, you know, there were so many companies and they started running out of names for the company. And, and so Swan was just one company. There were many, many names from that menagerie. It's almost as if they went to a zoo and there was a company called Zebra, another called Tiger, another called Parrot, another called Giraffe, another called Cheetah, and so on and so forth. But the short point is, Anil Ambani kept denying that he had anything whatsoever to do with Swan Telecom. The fact is, he did not deny that his companies were involved with Swan. He said, I was not a party to the wrongdoing. My people were. They are being charged. Shishit. They could be involved. But I don't remember anything. Absolutely So he correct. did not say, my companies are not involved. No, he never said that. In fact, there were three senior executives of his who actually had to spend time behind bars. But both he, Anil Ambani, as well as his wife, Tina, they said, you know, we sign on so many documents, on so many papers of so many companies, hundreds and hundreds of them. We can't remember all of them. And the amount involved, which they completely forgot or did not register, was just a small amount. It was 1,000 crores, roughly about 1,000 crores. The, the, which was that the, small change for uh, maybe people it's chump change. Of, of Yes, some change for uh, him. Of people who lead such uh, big conglomerates by Indian standards. The second part of it, and that's an interesting part, is that the names on the Salt Telecom was registered under uh, somebody's signature. And that was Mr. Hari Nair, who is the one who's been charge sheeted. And his email address was given as the Reliance official email. I mean, his, his email is the Reliance ADG that's email correct. was there. So CBI has charge sheeted him and two of his other colleagues who were clearly who against two paper trail was available. And, and, and all along, Anil Ambani kept saying that, look, you know, I meet all the telecom ministers. It's not just Mr. Raja. I met Mr. Pramod Mahajan. I met Mr. Kapil Sibal. But, but the point is, what they said, and this is interesting, is that what this the defense strongly denied was really the main allegation of the CBI. And that was what prompted the CBI to call the Ambani's as, as witnesses on, on, on the witness box, was that, 
this company, this Swan Telecom, was actually like a shell company. A shell company which was not eligible for the spectrum and the license that they got. Essentially, that was the, the, the sum and substance of and, the and CBI the allegation. And the reason that Reliance did not quote on their, off their own bat because they already had a license Correct. and therefore if they had got a second license that would have been a violation of That's the license. Correct. And uh, therefore they were term. not eligible. They're not eligible. So they in fact were the maximum they could have held was up to 10% and officially they held about 9.9% .9 or something and the rest was all held in the name of this animals from the zoo or the birds from the zoo as you have <laughs> and, talked and, and, about. And you know, uh, it's very interesting, uh, the apiary and the menagerie or whatever. Uh, what One of the interesting, I mean, for me as a journalist, I came across, I realized, how do you obfuscate? You know, there's something called ownership and there's something called control. And, and heavy tomes have been written given the complexities of the company laws. But typically what happens, and this is something I found very easily, one set of definitions is that you exercise managerial control only if you have majority shares in a particular company. That means you have to have 51%. Now what happens is some of these deals are sliced and diced and, con and, and structured in, 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 in such a complex manner as to deliberately obfuscate the real owners, often called the beneficial owners. And how is it done? Say you have three corporate entities, A, B, and C or you can call them swan and parrot and cheetah or whatever. A holds 50% of B, B holds 50% of C, and C holds 50% of A. Nobody's holding 51%. These companies are ostensibly associated with one another, yet nobody controls it. I mean, these are some of the, the, of the legal, uh, yes, slate of hand, that, that's the appropriate but phrase. But it's, it's an interesting issue also that in this case, particularly the Swan Telecom case, Reliance indirectly held, uh, I think they put in, not held, they put in 90% of the money and they did it as using uh, share capital and preferential shares. Therefore, they did not appear in the books as if they are the, they're the owners of the shares. But leaving the shenanigans out, the second part of it, which I think again uh, needs to be focused on, that Swan Telecom got, before it had received the licenses, it had received loans from State Bank of India and Punjab National Bank even before it had received licenses. And once it received licenses, it got up to, I think, 3,000 crores from the uh, Indian public sector banks, including Punjab National Bank and State Bank, to the tune of 3,000 crores, only on the basis of the paper. As we now know, that paper was courtesy Mr. Raja. But if it was courtesy Mr. Raja, the beneficiary is clearly Mr. Ambani or his company. And, and, and in, in fact, if, if he's the beneficiary, the loser are the, the, the people of this country because they are the people who are ostensibly the shareholders of these nationalized banks. And the owners of the spectrum. Secondly, after the license is received, 44% of it is sold to Italisat, uh, the Emirates company, and they pay a huge premium. So before the company starts operation, they have, based on the fact they've got a license, they've already got a huge premium. Whatever money they have got, what they had actually spent, they've already got much more than that. Now, with all of that, benefit from Mr. Raja, benefit from the finance ministry, virtue of the loans they have taken, without essentially any asset being mortgaged, just basis on the paper license, same person today becomes the beneficiary of Mr. Modi's largest, that he becomes a preferred partner for the Rafal deal when Hindustan Aeronautics has already experience, abilities, manufacturing setup, and it can be expanded for the uh, manufacture of Rafal as well. While Anil Ambani's group has absolutely no manufacturing experience, how do you explain it except crony capitalism? Absolutely, you know, uh, Prabir. Uh, whereas I have, I can pretend to know a little bit about the whole so-called 2G spectrum scam case as one of its petitioners, as one of the petitioners. And, uh, but, you know, I, I'm not an expert really on defense deals. But the little I've been able to understand and read 
And this is all in the public domain. I mean, I mean there have been literally hundreds of articles that have appeared in all kinds of newspapers and magazines and websites. They all kind of point towards one specific aspect. You know, this is not capitalism. This is crony capitalism. What, how, how do you say it? Here you have a public sector undertaking, HAL, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. I'm not an expert. So let me say, as a layperson, the way I see it, it was supposed to be a major beneficiary of this agreement, if you like, with the French manufacturer. And this was supposed to be a mutually beneficial deal because the French company was itself in a bad shape and no other air force from any other country were willing to buy its aircraft and it was only supplying its aircraft to its own yeah. air force. So here was a very, very crazy and inverted logic that was deployed to say, here is India, still ostensibly a developing country, a third world country, and here is a so-called advanced country in, in Europe, a member of the Security Council with veto powers, and here we are, ostensibly trying to bail out a, a, a fighter jet uh, manufacturer, yeah. which, which is in, in, in dire straits, and then the whole story gets a even more stranger and I, I would say pernicious twist when out of the blue a private player comes up and he's nowhere in the picture and suddenly in record time these companies are set up and before you know it once again Mr. Anil Ambani and his corporate entities seem to be all ready to laugh all the way to the bank and back. So it's an interesting issue that uh, here is the, shall we say, the preferred beneficiary of the 2G scam, in which, of course, you detect, as you know, the RUIAs, SRs, you were, I think, part of the loop. That's correct. There was Unitech Group with uh, Telenor of Norway. You know, all these deals have got unstuck completely. They got all unstuck. The foreign companies, of course, were left holding the bag, uh, as well as the banks. Both of them have taken very heavy hits on that. But the promoters, who actually benefited from both sides, selling the shares as well as the licenses, they, as you said, laughed all the way to the bank. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there were some exceptions. Mr. Sanjay Chandra, who was heading the Unitech Group, he, he ended up behind bars, which had nothing to do, of course, with the telecom scam. It had something to do with their real estate deals. It's also interesting that, you know, the uh, Sanjay, Mr. Chandra went to jail. Mr. Anil Ammani did not. His associates went to jail. It, it does appear that it could be the government was more soft on Mr. Ambani than they were on Mr. Chandra uh, for the telecom scam, or it is that they, Mr. Chandra's were much more open about what they're doing, and Mr. Ambani, his memory helped him by not being able to remember any of the transactions his company had done. But leaving all of that out, the point is that here is our companies who are in deep, deeply embedded, shall we say, or in, in bed with Mr. Raja on the 2G scam, who now are center stage on the controversial Rafale deal. But so, one, we, But one second, one second, why are you surprised, Prabhupada? You know, the, these individuals you named here, Anil Ambani, this would be true for many of the big industrialists, the, the big capitalists of India, and I dare say in many parts of the world. They are for them in that sense apolitical. Mr. Anil Ambani at one point of time was very close to the Samajwadi party. The point is industrialists more than perhaps most others certainly know as to use an old uh, somewhat archaic uh, British phrase know which side their bread is buttered or they know who is in power and who is in authority and know exactly how to play that game. That's how we'd like to end this part today. That essentially what we're looking at are what appears to be the actors on the stage. But who is directing the show for whose benefit? That seems to be something which is not being registered. Or if it is, it's not being talked about. So the play might have been, the actors in the play might be Mr. Raja, might be the telecom secretary at the time, Manmohan Singh's government, and so on. But the real 
people who are benefiting from it much more than Mr. Raja or the coterie around him were really those who made a killing out of the, these deals and they seem to be doing the same with the Rafale deal today. So essentially, the play might have appeared to have changed, but the actors, at least behind the scenes, continue to be the same. Thank you very much, Paranjay. We'll be in touch. We'll be in conversation on these and other matters. Thank you, Prabhu. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Keep watching News Click. Visit our YouTube site, our Facebook page, and do get in touch with us if you have anything that you want us to do.